Good morning and welcome to Wake Up to Wellness with Michelle Christman and I'm so excited you're with us. We're here to empower you, your friends, your family, and your loved ones to be healthy and well naturally. And the one thing that I absolutely love about health is that we were made to function at a high level of health and vitality. Your body was made to be the best you ever. And the one thing that I've noticed throughout my time in practice with my husband, who's a wellness chiropractor, his name is Dr. Evan R. Christman, and we own Christman Family Chiropractic a creating wellness center in Bel Air, Maryland, is that many people believe that they're not only not functioning at a high level of health, but they're supposed to be sick. You know, I hear so many people come in telling me that their children have normal asthma, that they have normal headaches, that they constantly are not feeling well. This time of year, they tell me they're catching the flu, they got the virus. And I almost imagine that they have a catcher's mitt on and then here comes the flu and they've got it. Here comes the virus and they've got that. But the reality is that's not how your body is supposed to function and work at all. We're not supposed to have normal headaches. We're not supposed to have asthma or ear infections. The reality is our body is so smart and intelligent. The first thing that was created when we were born is called the neural streak. Literally, it's what we're living our life through, our central nervous system. It controls every single organ, tissue, and cell in the body and allows for there to be signals sent to the brain, to the body, and back again for a hundred percent health and quality of life. And in today's world, we're living among an abundance of stresses, more than our body's ability to adapt. I call them the straw that broke the camel's back. And they're broken down into three categories, physical, chemical, and emotional. And I ask you to start to think about what stresses are going on in your life and how can you not only improve your health and function at a high level the way we were supposed to, but what might be missing in your life. And today we're going to be talking to one of the most amazing chiropractors in the world. His name is Dr. Eric Russell, and he's the president of New Zealand College of Chiropractic, which I've got to tell you, you know, I'm a chiropractic assistant registered in the state of Maryland, and I would love to be a chiropractor. If I had my life to do all over again, I would be enrolling in New Zealand College of Chiropractic. And tell me, Dr. Eric, not only welcome to Wake Up to Wellness with Michelle Christman, I'm so grateful and thankful you're here, but I'd love to know more about you and more about New Zealand College of Chiropractic. Well, Michelle, thank you so much for the opportunity to be on today. I, I really appreciate it. I've really been looking forward to, to sharing with you and uh, to the people in Maryland. I'm just so excited and, and throughout the world. Uh, for my, myself, I'm a chiropractor. I graduated uh, in 1996, been uh, 15 years in private practice, and then I was called to um, – it's very interesting. My life purpose took me to start teaching chiropractic more so than practicing chiropractic, and then career in academics was born, and then here I am as president of the New Zealand College of Chiropractic. Uh, it's a wonderful college. It's, it was founded in 1994 um, by a bunch of chiropractors in New Zealand that wanted to make sure that the philosophy of chiropractic was important and that was really brought through the whole education process. And we currently have um, about 260 students enrolled in our campus, and we have probably one of the premier chiropractic colleges in the world without a doubt. Yeah, I would say you definitely do have the premier college uh, for chiropractic in the world. Uh, and tell me, you know, what is chiropractic philosophy? Well, it's interesting. I think chiropractic philosophy, and we'll try to try to equate this to something that every single member of your audience can get out of. It's kind of like having a purpose, but for us, it's having that purpose in why we do what we do. And I think it starts with that, that the body is self-healing, it's self-regulating, so if you have a cut, it's going to heal, and it's controlled through the nervous system, as you so eloquently explained. And if there's any interference to that nervous system, it can interfere with how well the body functions. It can have different effects that, that show up. So it always starts with the philosophy. Um, it always starts with the fact that there is intelligence in the universe that, that basically um, I'm always amazed when I look at things in the universe about seasons and there's patterns and, and gravity. There's always illustrations of organization and intelligence in the universe, and that works within every living thing, and that's where we start, and that's what we kind of honor within chiropractic. So that's, that's kind of chiropractic philosophy in a nutshell, but it's also about having an understanding of your purpose, of the why you're a chiropractor, or a life purpose for a person that's, that's not a chiropractor that's so vitally important to your success and overall happiness and well-being. And, you know, tell me, why did you become a chiropractor? I mean, what was that 
you know, there are always these amazing stories I keep hearing of, of why somebody decided to be one, but is there one for you? You know, Michelle, that's a great question. Um, I've, I've had the fortunate experience of being with so many chiropractic students that's had amazing experiences. Mine was a little different. Um, I actually was interested in a career in dentistry at the time. I do I did exactly what I encourage all my students to do or prospective students is go hang out with someone who does what you think you want to do. Go observe for the day, and you're going to see very quickly if this is something I can do and I can't do. I'm not talking about the facade of the appearance, the public appearance. I'm saying spend the day. So I went and spent the day with a dentist, and probably the first patient uh, was a nice, lovely elderly lady the dentist reached in, grabbed her dentures, dentures pulled out her dentures, and there's probably a, a string of saliva that was about three feet long oh. in my mind. <laughs> and I right then knew, no, this isn't it. So I was interested in a career in health. I didn't really know what to do. And around that time, I had a subluxation in my neck, had a hard time turning my neck. And a friend of mine who was getting ready to enter chiropractic school said, well, go see a chiropractor. I went. I had phenomenal results and I was up in chiropractic school six months later. So I kind of, I've had some remarkable stories I've heard from people that have life-changing events. Mine felt like a door was opened, and I've been so grateful that I went through that door. Isn't that wonderful? You know, my uh, husband, when he started down that path, he actually worked for a chiropractor in our town uh, that was very much uh, pain-based, which is not what chiropractic's about at all. Um, And he was running his rehab center, and he ended up uh, asking three or four chiropractors, where should you go to school? Um, so he went to Logan College of Chiropractic, which he loved, but he ended up having an internship at a uh, chiropractor's office back home who was very, very pain-based. Um, and the guy called him a week before he was supposed to go out and said, hey, you know, I'm involved in a lawsuit between the original chiropractor you worked with and and myself. I can't have you. However, I have a friend who's in Tawanda, Pennsylvania, and he said he'll take you in. And my husband thought, oh, my God. Well, he shows up, and this gentleman adjusts over 200 people a day. You know, he's seeing newborns and children and pregnant women and families so that they could function well. Uh, It was part of their care that they came to a quality of life class. And my husband said on the first day that he started adjusting, he adjusted 185 people. And he (laughs) walked away going, oh, my God, what is this? You know, because he wasn't taught philosophy. Um, and, well, the, yeah. the whole thing that's amazing about that, Michelle, I'm sorry to interrupt. It's, no, I'm just so it. darn excited. By this. <laughs> the whole thing that's interesting is we're often defined by all of our life experiences, positive and negative, and it's what you take away and what you learn from and, and the doors that open up. I had a similar experience as your husband that, you know, when I graduated chiropractic school, I just did not initially have a good um, grasp of, of the why of chiropractic and, and what makes it special and unique, that it's a, a drugless um, profession that you do to help restore function and people's improved quality of life by adjusting the vertebral subluxation. So I, within the first year, I was kind of like, did I pick the right path? And it wasn't until it, I got around people that were positive, all the positive chiropractors the ones that were making the biggest difference in their communities and were being leaders in their community and the profession were those that were fired up about what they do, and they were some of the ones that were in love with the philosophy of chiropractic. Mm-hmm. And that's what started my journey to study it. Yeah. Very similar path. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. And my uh, entering chiropractic, which was so interesting, uh, you know, my dad has a tractor store, and I grew up selling tractors. Um, I never took a lunch, and at the time I was dating my husband, and he said, you know, I want you to come and have lunch with me. And I thought, lunch? I'm supposed to be working. But I went in and I saw this little girl uh, came in to see him. She was three years old. She's dragging an oxygen tank that was almost as big as her, had a face mask on. You could see the veins in her face. And the medical doctors told her parents she was never going to get well. She'd always um, uh, have that tank, would always have the feeding tube, was never going to grow. And I watched within a month and a half. I kept showing up for lunch, which was totally not like me. Um, I watched her get off the oxygen tank, get off the face mask. I watched the green veins totally disappear in this beautiful face return. 
And I've been grateful and thankful over the last, um, you know, 15 years. I've watched this little girl grow. She's almost as tall as me. Her uh, feeding tube is gone. And she has her own adjusting table in her home. You know, and why wow. is that? Because her family understands how vital it is for that power of that chiropractic to adjustment of adjustment to occur so her body can function at a high level so she gets to be well um and i gotta tell you i've been fired up ever since um and i i understand how vitally important it is for not only my husband to be the person he is and go through those doors for you to be who you are but now we're talking about new zealand chiropractic college um, I know that you guys are not only opening doors while they're in college and teaching them what the philosophy is and, and how vital chiropractic is for life. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger said one day that chiropractic is a necessity and many people think mm. chiropractic is an option. Um, and so uh, tell me, like, what are you doing differently in your school that would get not only those students to understand philosophy, but to show up in our communities in big ways. Because let's face it, we're the sickest we've ever been as a culture. And, you know, medicine is not the answer. It's great for emergency care, but it is not the answer to health care. However, I believe chiropractic has the answer for health care. And how do you guys do things differently? Yeah, I agree with your assumptions there, Michelle, as well, because, you know, what we found... I practiced in a pretty, uh, for 10 years, had a practice in a pretty rural area of Texas. And what I saw over those 10 years is just people becoming sicker and sicker. It was, uh, obesity was rising, and just the overall health. And what they, what they were looking for was a silver bullet to come save them, some drug, some surgery, without any thought process to the ramifications or the side effects that may happen. So I think every healthcare profession, including medicine, has its place. Chiropractic's best function is every day for people that helps prevent, for basically not prevent, for optimal expression. So therefore, they don't need as many drugs or surgeries. And, and we can, if we can prolong that quality of life where they're really vibrant and happy, happy and wellness, that's a fantastic win. And I think that's the niche for chiropractic. It's all about improving quality of life through the full expression of the nervous system. What we do at the New Zealand College of Chiropractic is it's, it's something simple. I, I would encourage everyone to do it, but start with the end in mind. So my thought process was what does an ideal graduate look like when they cross that stage? And there's four key components that I think is vital for a graduate to be successful. Uh, the first one is they must have a great understanding of philosophy. And we kind of talked on that a little bit, but it's understanding of the why of chiropractic. So, and if you do that, when you wake up, you're inspired, you're ready to go make a difference in the world because you have full confidence and an understanding of, of all the benefits that you can have underneath chiropractic care. Um, I also incorporate into that philosophy a little talk about a life's purpose. Um, one of the biggest things for me was um, I, I had a great practice, but I was really called to teach chiropractic to students. And the reason why is I had an impact of a thousand people in my community, or, or more so. You know, as a town of 8,000, I had and quite a few in these care. But when I go to chiropractic college to start teaching the future generation of chiropractors, I had a much bigger influence because I wanted to show them this is how to be successful. This is how to maintain that enthusiasm uh, in your practice. This is how to be the best chiropractor that you can be. So then they're they're better chiropractors when they graduate than I was when I graduated. So having a great understanding of the why of, of chiropractic and your life purpose is important. The second one I think is vitally important for any graduate is to have, a, the, we want it to be what's called a consumer of science. We want them to be able to stay current on the literature, understand the literature, critically think about all the different studies that go on. They don't have to be doing all the research, but we think it's important because policymakers and uh, oftentimes if you're in a university town or sometimes a patient will want to know about the current literature, you should be up on it and current, but also be able to say, you know what, this is a good study, this is a bad study. And to be able to critically think about does this fit the chiropractic, was this you know, designed correctly, this experiment, and what are the ramifications of the experiment are, are important. So we want them to be comfortable with that because every healthcare maker, policymaker, legislation, they use science as their language 
and, and it's also a common language with other healthcare uh, practitioners, just to improve our ability to communicate the, the, basically the why of chiropractic to them. I think the third thing is I want uh, someone that's really committed to the art of chiropractic or their technique to be the best adjuster, best doctor they can be, to have the best communication skills, um, and just to be overall, because I think every person in any community that doesn't need chiropractic care wants to know that their doctor is always striving to be the best they can be. I know that after almost 20 years in practice that I am continually learning, and I want to be better 20 years from now than I am now. And that's what I want our successful graduates to be, is always constant and never-ending learning and improvement uh, with their how they give an adjustment and how they can analyze if there's a problem with the patient, do they have subluxations, where they're at, when to adjust and when not to adjust. I think the last thing is they should have important leadership and business skills. Um, we want them to be able to to almost establish themselves as leaders in the community and leaders in the profession, to be able to speak up and have those leadership skills. And I think behind that is just good overall life skills, including business, that it serves as a great foundation for you to have comfort knowing things are taken care of so you can go out and serve and not worry about uh, paying your bills. So yeah. those four components, the philosophy, consumer science, dedication to the art, and leadership business skills – are, is fundamental to what we do here. Yeah, I've got to tell you, and that is priceless. Um, because being in practice as long as uh, my husband has since 1996, you know, it, it definitely has been a learning experience. Um, and one of the things that we've always loved but never realized that this is what we should have been doing all along is get out in our community. You know, I know there were many years we sat inside of our practice going, huh, yeah, well, you know, what's happening here? You know, we had a nice practice, but it wasn't what we really, really wanted. Um, and we are out in the community. I mean, we do screenings every single weekend. There are not many events that Dr. Evan and I will miss. Um, we use the subluxation station through CLA, which is so vital for our community to become educated and understand Absolutely. what we're doing. Um you know, we do workshops, we do dinner talks, we're having one tomorrow night, um, and we've got a waiting list of people that are waiting to go to the next one. Um, so our workshops are, are, are filled. Every week we do workshops in our practice, those are filled. Um, we also do uh, talks on for children with learning differences and autism on the autism spectrum. We do that at a dairy where... Uh, they make fresh homemade ice cream. Everybody gets whatever free ice cream they want. It's on us. Um, you know, so we've learned that, uh, you know, we have to love to want to empower and educate our community and the world to be healthy and well naturally for them to understand the chiropractic philosophy. Because from all I, what I've learned is that if I'm not the one out there, if my husband's not the one out there opening their mouth and standing up who else is going to do it? And yeah. it really makes you walk away because the changes we see in people in our practice are absolutely amazing. Chiropractic does some beautiful things. So it sounds like from what you're doing at New Zealand College of Chiropractic, you know, you guys are doing amazing things for the, the students to come out educated, empowered, and ready to be successful where the rest of us have sort of stumbled along and learned as we've, as we've gone. Um, yeah, and that's that's the goal to basically create a student that's further down the road in development than you were when you were at that same stage. My idea would be they're either ready to start their own practice and start serving people in communities, or if they want to go somewhere and work for a great chiropractor like your husband, they can do that and get further fine tuning and mentoring before they open up on their own. Or you know, it's, that's the goal is to really not worry about surviving; it's about thriving. And, and how do you have those skills to thrive? And I agree with you completely. We, we do these talks not to reach, we want to reach as many people as we can, but we're happy to save the lives of those that are willing to go on the journey with us. And once they do and they see the improvement in their quality of life, you know they'll tell others and others will come in. So we, we could probably spend hours and hours going over people that have great success by being underneath chiropractic care because it's truly, I think, nature's, it's just the world's best health profession. 
Isn't that the truth? Now, you know, there's a word that we use in our practice that not many people know of, and it's called the word subluxation. You know, what is that word, and why is it so important? Well, subluxation is important because it's unique to, it's, it's part of chiropractic's terminology and language, and that's why it's very important that for us within the chiropractic profession, I know there's chiropractors that listen, that we maintain that, is because if we start giving up our unique identity, then people um, pretty soon they can't tell what we do. Um, subluxation is a word that basically means interference with how well the inborn intelligence of the body communicates to itself. And that was started um, way back when chiropractic was founded in 1895, that term was defined. And it's kind of central to every chiropractor, regardless of different things they may do on their technique or they may choose or choose not to do, um, like ultrasound or therapies in their office or nutrition, the subluxation and adjusting the subluxation is the core at what chiropractors do. And I think it's important to honor it. There are some people that think within chiropractic that we should use a term that's probably easier to pronounce, but then lay people know what gingivitis is, and I think gingivitis is not easier to understand than, than subluxation. Mm-hmm. So if you look at what subluxation truly is, the, there is an intelligence. Your body self-regulates uh, and self-heals, we talked about. You look at any any basic um, cell is underneath nervous system control directly or indirectly. And it gets a message to do basically two or three things. One is to speed up, one is to slow down, and the, other, the third message is to stay, you're good, to stay where you are. The body does that. It's, it's through this um, auto-regulation all the time. And that's, like I said, is our control through the nervous system. And there's approximately, there's different 700 trillion cells so you have 700 trillion unique messages that go to those cells, all individual, all unique, that tell that cell what to do. And there's always a message that goes back to the central, I mean, to the brain to say, hey, this is going well, it's going bad, or what can we do to improve it? So kind of like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Do you remember that, Michelle? Mm-hmm, I do. This bed is... This bed is too hard, this bed is too soft, this one's just right. Uh-huh. Or the porridge was too hot, one was too cold, the one's just right. Right. So the cells are either doing too much function, which we can, and those are easily diagnosed terms, too little function, which then that's the hypothyroidism would be too little, and then you have the just right. So what we try to do is if there's an interference, the more likely the cells aren't to function correctly. So we, find, as chiropractors, find those interference, remove them through a, car, a safe and effective chiropractic adjustment to restore communication so the body can get just right. Isn't that great? And tell me, you know, what is an adjustment? The adjustment is the chiropractor that basically analyzes, carefully analyzes the patient's spine to look for the area of interference where the vertebra may be out of place and it may be causing other effects such as decreased range of motion, inflammation around that area, Remove that interference so the nervous system function properly. And I got to tell you, you know, chiropractic has just flat out changed and saved my life. And I simply ask people to just get checked. You know, not only begin to see and realize that chiropractic is about you functioning at a high quality of life and vitality, but who wouldn't want that? You know, who wouldn't want to function at a high level of health? And many people in today's age, they get caught up in how they feel. You know, the pharmaceutical companies are spending an estimated $65 million a day on teaching us that if we feel good, we're well, and if we feel bad, we're sick. The reality is that is not how the body functions or works at all. So tell me, you know, if somebody were to be having a child that has asthma, why? Why would they come into a chiropractor's office first? Well... Five, per, five to eight percent of your nervous system is sensory, which is feeling. So most people base their health off of how well they feel, which is only, as we just talked about, five percent or eight percent of the information. So I don't think anybody would, you know, if I only listened to my wife five to eight percent of the time, I'd be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> my so yeah, too. <laughs> absolutely. You, you want to make sure that we look at all the areas that the nervous system functions in, not just the pain-based one, because. You know, I, in my chiropractic practice experience, I had people that were, let's say, you know, riding a horse, fell off a horse at age 18, they knocked themselves out. They come into my office at age 60, 
And because that subluxation was present, which basically decrease was, was not functioning, any time a vertebra is not functioning correctly, it accelerates the, the degenerative process. So a, a patient would come in at age 60, and they would bring in x-rays, and they typically would say, you know, I went to the medical doctor, and he said that my, uh, it's just normal aging. You know, it's, they're not, medical doctors are highly trained and do a great job. They're just not trained at vertebral subluxation detection. So my answer to that patient would always be, well, look, there's seven, there's seven bones in your neck here. Are they all decayed the same way? And they would say, no, just this one area here. I'm like, yeah, but aren't they all the same age? And that was usually enough to make them think, oh. I said, because what we have here is decreased function accelerates the decay process. Kind of like the more your car is out of alignment, the more you drive the car, the more tire it's going to wear out. Mm-hmm. Really, These are really simplistic analogies, and, and probably we can get much more scientific with them. But I want to talk to the everyday person. You know, I grew up on a grain farm in Illinois. Mm. So that's the kind of, you know, the language or the people. I can ramp it up if it's a, a Ph.D. person in my office. Or we can go down to the everyday, you know, people that just need to understand what chiropractic is better. So that's that's what I look for, is how to, you know, take those people. And, and typically the common sense question next is, you know, if you would have came in 20 years ago, do you think it had been as bad? No. And I said that's why it's important to get checked regularly, because it really helps improve that function throughout isn't that the truth? And tell me, our final thoughts, you know, in, in less than a minute, you know, what's the biggest lesson you've learned? I mean, you know, if there was a big takeaway for you right now as to chiropractic, how it's improved your life, um, what is it? You know, it's, it's find out what your life's passion is, get as good as you can around that skill, and just be the best you can be and enjoy it. I love it. I love it. And that's so simple. And I've got to tell you, I'm so grateful and thankful that you not only uh, joined us today, but we're a part of our life, you know, for the last 30 minutes. Um, You are such a smart and intelligent person. And uh, New Zealand College of Chiropractic is so uh, fortunate to have you at their helm. Um, as I said, you know, if I were younger, if I were prior to meeting my husband, uh, I would be coming down there to go to school and, and to become a chiropractor myself. My husband oftentimes, you know, I'll say to him, God, I wish I were a chiropractor. And he says, you know, but you have a better ability to educate and empower people to be healthy and well through chiropractic. Um, you know, all you need is that voice and that understanding of the philosophy and what chiropractic is. Um, and so I'm grateful and thankful for all that you do. Um, and I'd love to have you back on in the future. And Dr. Eric, thank you so much. Well, Michelle, thank you. you. You're making a huge difference in the world, and I appreciate appreciate it very much. Oh, you are welcome. And I can't wait for y'all to tune in next week. We're going to have one of the most amazing shows. We are not only here to empower you, your friends, your family, and your loved ones to be healthy and well naturally, but we're here for you to not only begin to see how vital your health is. You know, many people will say that I feel good, but the reality is when you lose your health, you have nothing. And many people will spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to regain it back. But what happens? happens if money can't buy your health back you know start now that's why we see newborns as soon as they're born that's why we take care of children and pregnant women and children on the autism spectrum so they function at a high level of health and vitality and then teach you how to lead a healthy lifestyle so you can function at a great level of health and vitality and you can tune into us live every saturday from 8 30 to 9 in the morning eastern standard time on wamd 970 am wyre 810 WKHZ 1460 and you can watch us on www.khztv.com again thanks for listening have a great day and wake up to wellness with Michelle Chrisman every Saturday enjoy your health